Hi, I'm Judith Green from Somerset Libraries. I'm looking to do some talks about things you can find when you're outside on your walks, perhaps. Now, as you may know from previous um, talks I've done, I'm very interested in plants and things, but it's not a great time of year for plants, as you can see, middle of January. It's quite cold and windy, ver verging on freezing. And as you can see from this field here, it's very wet as well. So, given that I can't really say a lot about plants, I wondered what else I could do. And I'm thinking about putting together a series of things that you might think about or come across while you're out on your walk. Um, and I was going to call the series Natural Curiosity, so we'll see how we get on. Now, this particular instance, you can see, is a field just near my home. Very rough grass, and you might think, well, what are we looking at that for? Well, this is an area that barn owls hunt over, and given that it um, gets dark fairly early and doesn't get light till quite late, it's just possible you might see a barn owl while you're out. Uh, beautiful white underneath and, and buffy brown on top, lovely patterned, lovely patterned feathers and a heart-shaped face. Now barn owls quite like eating voles, perfect, perfect diet for barn owls and a field like this where you've got rough tussocky grass is perfect ground for voles. Now the chances are you probably won't see them around this time of year because they live in little holes in the thatch layer underneath the grass on top and they make tunnels and they just come out far enough to graze when they can. But the owls when they're hunting can hear very very well and they'll catch perhaps four to six voles a night on a good night. Now as you can see we've got rough tussocky grass alongside the garden and down in the bottom here we've got what's called the waste which is fairly coarse grass and then over the edge there's another line of very rough tussocky grass so the barn owls do come across the garden occasionally. As I said barn owls have terribly good hearing and they hunt by, by sound a lot of the time and just uh, tune into where their prey is and pounce on it. But so that they can't be heard as they're hunting and also so that they can hear over the sound of the wind, they have very, very soft feathers, much softer than other birds, which makes them very silent flyers. The downside of this is that when it rains, they get wet and wet feathers don't work terribly well. So when it rains, they tend to hang out, out of the rain as much as they can and extend their hunting period. And on particularly wet nights, they come and sit in our shed. Now, they used to sit on this fluorescent light fitting, but we got rather sorry for them in case their feet froze. And so we put up, we hung a, a wooden perch from the roof. And you might just be able to make out on there a few white streaks, which tells you what happens from there as well. No, just a teeny bit, unfortunately, my car tends to be underneath here. And so it tends to look as though a bucket of whitewash has been thrown at it. It's about, looks like half a pint of white whitewash chucked down the roof or the sides. Okay, so this is a barn owl pellet. Um, it's, um, there's my hand, this side, it's, so it's a bit bigger than my thumb, it's broken in half, it broke in half when I picked it up. I've had it for about a week, um, standing on a plastic tray, so it's gone slightly mouldy, but this gives you an idea of the general size. It's a barn owl one, I picked it up underneath where they roost, on the perches. Um, it doesn't smell, and so I'm confident, given the size and location, that it was a barn owl pellet. So I'm going to start breaking it up now and we'll see what's inside. That is a jawbone, you see. It's fiddly. You can see the little tiny teeth.
along here and the main teeth at the front. Mm. There's another one or two. Ah, that's a skull. Now then, you can see there's lots of bits of fur in there as well. Slightly sticky. When they're flesh, they're slightly more bleakable. Bleak up, I should say. So that's probably a, a vole. Voles are barn owls' favourite treats. They produce about one or two pellets per evening or day, you might say. There's another one. So we've got two jaw bones there and a skull. They can't digest the bones and fur, so they swallow them, broadly speaking, whole. And then they churn around in their stomachs for a while, which um, breaks up the more succulent parts. And then they cough these up very, very carefully, a big pellet, which is comprised of compressed fur and bones. Otherwise, they'd have to fly around with a load of bones in their tummies, which would be quite heavy for birds. So just having a bit more of a poke in here. That's mostly, see the smaller bones there. It's easy just to count up the jaw bones, really. Some, there's a few hard bits in there, but no more, no more jaw bones, I don't think. I'll get rid of that piece there then. Here we go, let's go on with the next one then. Here's another jawbone. Usually they swallow them whole, I think. Uh, sometimes they'll break them up, but just some little bone there. Some ribs, maybe. Oh, there's another skull. The rest of this particular part of the pellet's mostly fur and small bones. So I'm going to move that out of the way so we can concentrate on the skulls and jaws what you might call a head count. <laughs> now what's that? They're about a week, this is about a week old, this um, pellet. I think that's a little skull. So yes, it's about a week old. When they're fleshed, they're black and tarry looking. And they gradually hmm, break down. Dry out, I should say. Right, here's a good collection of jaw bones. One, two, and a skull all covered in gunk. You have to trust me on that one. That's the underneath. And there's the front there's the front teeth, you see. And the little tiny teeth there. Looks like this owl had quite a good takeaway. There's another joy. See, that's been on the outside, so that's dried out. You can see a bit more easily what's going on there. Something a bit hard in here. Leg bones, I think. You get much soup out of that, would you? Not quite sure what that is. Oh, here's some. Here's another jaw. Just 
just have a little bit more of poking amongst the soft stuff here. No, mostly small bones and fur now. So I think that's it in here. So let's just move those out of the way. Bits of fur. And then we can see a bit more clearly what we've got. So we've got three skulls. One two, three jaw bones, and a couple of bits, I'm not quite sure what they are. There we go. So it had three voles for its tea. Sometimes they produce two pellets, so it could have had another pellet and eaten in fact six voles, but that's a reasonable haul.